I'm a priest with a problem, and it keeps me up at night. What am I going to do with church bulletins? Seriously, guys, uh, our bishop last week gave us permission to start putting these books of common prayer, the book that we use for our services, back into the pew slots in our churches. Basically, we can start using our books again. Up until now, we've been uh, printing out uh, either full-form bulletins with all of the, the, um, the sentences and responses from both the clergy and the congregation and the choir and everybody, all of the directions and the different readings for the day. We put everything into a full beginning-to-end bulletin, or in some churches, uh, they've just asked people to bring a Book of Common Prayer from their home and use that instead. Now, I love using the book. I think it's what we should do if we have them in our pews. I mean, we bought them, we might as well use them. Yet, for decades, churches have opted to just print out full-form bulletins. So, the, the move to a fully texted uh, bulletin is not strange for a lot of churches. It's what they've actually just been doing. But in seminary, uh, we were taught to really use an abbreviated sort of, uh, I guess, indexed bulletin, I'm calling it. You know, the, the one that says, you know, the opening acclamation, page 367 or whatever, uh, the so-and-so, page whatever. Um, and so you had all the parts of the service but it was just broken down into page numbers. It was more like a table of contents, really. And you would uh, just have this little half sheet of paper. And so on one side would be the page numbers you needed to uh, refer to. Um, and the other side might be the uh, printout of the readings, the Old Testament and New Testament readings, uh, the gospel reading. Um, and in the back of that pamphlet might have... Uh, uh, prayers and announcements for the communal life of the church. And that's what I was uh, basically trained to make. Um, our professor thought it was just a real uh, um, neat and concise way to uh, get the worship done. Uh, you know, you can have people hold books. It's okay. Of course, all that was pre-COVID. Now we're used to being in full-fledged bulletin mode. And me being the kind of person I am, I found a way to automate making these, you know, week-to-week -week fully tailored bulletins. I took all of the colics and the prefaces and the, the readings, like as far as the, the, the citation of the reading and the sentence that would have been read by the reader and the actual body paragraph of the scripture itself, and put them all into a massive Excel sheet, and then was able to cross-reference all those different cells and all those different pages and put them through a mail merge, basically, into a word processor document. A lot of people use Microsoft Word. I use uh, Apple's Pages. Um, but it, essentially, you can do the same thing with either word processor. So essentially, I created a big mail merge, and for every service, I would just pop those uh, pre-formatted uh, readings that were in an Excel sheet into the placeholders that I had deemed the spots for those uh, things to happen. Take a look. So this is our church website. I'll get back to that in a second. What I will show you is... There we go. Went one. So yeah. So here's our bulletin for um, for a couple of weeks ago. So this was a custom field that I, I had uh, as an Excel um, cell. Here is another cell. Would be that the name of that. Um, this is a prayer unique for that day. So this would have been in its own cell. This would have been in Excel. This would have been in Excel. Uh, this whole body would be in Excel, as would this line, 
this whole body and its cell, as well as, like we said, that citation, this line that the reader says, as well as, of course, this body, and the same for the gospel. All this would have been custom tailored for that bulletin. Um, prayers of the people usually can change from time to time. This is stayed the same mostly. Um, and yeah, and so, and then of course, there are some obvious changes in this uh, bulletin uh, unique for Lent. Um, but that's basically how I was doing my uh, Lenten um, bulletins. Um, seasonal changes will happen. You know, uh, right now we're doing Eucharistic Prayer A in my church. Um, and then come Easter, I'm going to switch it over to Eucharistic Prayer D. Um, and we'll do that one for a season. So I say all this because... Um, by making a massive spreadsheet and using a mail merge type feature in pages, um, I could create an entire season's worth of Sunday bulletins, full form, totally um, laid out there, um, just with the, the, the push of a button, and they would just generate automatically. Um, now, did I do a bunch of work on the front end so that I could get to a point where I basically had three years' worth of lectionary that was in an Excel sheet that could be uh, made to create whatever I wanted? Yes. So I put a lot of work into basically a bot that could make whatever bulletin I wanted it to. Um, and that will carry through um, year after year after year Trienium after trienium after trienium. Um, yeah, as long as I need it to. Um, so essentially, I have made every bulletin for the rest of my career, if you want to think about it that way. So time well spent, I think, in creating that system. I mean, it took me about a week to do it, but, you know, I'm glad I did it. Um, now, if you go back and we look at our bulletin, here we also have prayers for people, and for announcements for our church. And those, of course, are also tailored for the individual week. Uh, different people have different celebrations or suffer different kinds of hardships from week to week. And the prayers of the people and the announcements will change to reflect what's going on both with the people in the church and with the activity of the church. Um and I will say that I have, um, when I've collected prayers to the people, whether they come in through email or through an online form that we have set up on our website, uh, they all go to pretty much the same spot, which is an Excel sheet that I've got set up for that purpose. Um, and yet, uh, I do what pretty much uh, every bulletin maker does, which is go into their word processor copy last week's prayers and announcements and paste them into this week's prayers and announcements section. It's really a copy and paste job. But in doing that, there is much room for human error to mess that up. And so I have forgotten to take someone off the sick list after they died uh, because I copied a, a prayer thing from a few weeks uh, in the past and so this person was still listed as sick when, in fact, they had already passed away. So it was very embarrassing to uh, hear that someone's being prayed for to be sick and to get better when they have actually already had their funeral. That was my bad, and, and I don't want that to happen again. There's too much human error in, in all that doing. Um, instead of trying to gather different uh, types of information from different sources— um, whether they be sticky notes on your desk or emails that people sent you or uh, a form that you generated on, on the Internet. Um, you're pulling all these uh, bits of information together scattered over all different sources and forms so you can put them into the prayers of the people or the announcements or what have you. Um, there's a lot of 
a human being stopping to copy and paste information from one space and paste it into a final space and copy and paste from one space into another final space. If I can get a bot or some kind of automation to do that for me, and instead of being a human being who copies and pastes information into a form and then go back and proofread that form, if I can just instead be a human being who proofs one form and then that's it, I will be a happy person. I don't want to have to, I want to take the human out of all of those little steps that gets to the final step. I'd rather just be at the final step, giving it a proof, looking over it, maybe doing some deeper fact checking if I need to. But those are easy things to do, especially if you have an automated system because you know where your point of entry is for someone submitting a prayer request. You can just go to wherever you've, you've set it up to where you can check their original entry and say, oh, that did happen this week. I need to make sure that John is added to, you know, a birthday blessing or whatever it is. Um, so that is what I aim to do. Now here is the long process of automating how prayers happen and how church announcements happen. It all started, again, with putting this book back in the pew. I uh, decided that I was going to uh, figure out what's a better way to up our parish communication because there are many different groups in my humble little church. Uh, there are those that are able to come to in-person worship because we do have a limited uh, availability for in-person worship uh, at present. There are those that do all of their faithful worship week to week online, um, and that's great. We have the ability here to live stream our services in real time, and that's fantastic. However, there's also the population that really stay at home um, for whatever reason, uh, due to health or age or, or, or what have you, or the, um, it, um, unable to access strong internet at their home anyway. We just have people who won't get online and won't be able to come to church, and that is great too. But that means that their means of communication with the broader community are physical mailers that we send to them. And that can be kind of problematic because now here we are creating uh, an um, equity of content, an equity of up-to-date information with um, uh, sources on how to connect with groups or, or um, outreach ministries or what have you, um, how to get access to the same information and have the opportunity to plug yourself in uh, wherever you feel able. Um, but now that information has to be done in person and online and in a physical mailer. We need a better newsletter. But if we're going to do a better newsletter, uh, things got to change. Because our previous rector, before my time, uh, sent out an electronic, lovely email that uh, was just all text-based, and you know, every section head was a, a bold, and then all the information following was uh, regular font. Um, and it was, you know, upcoming birthdays, anniversaries, uh, events happening in the church, um, you know, uh, prayer requests, things like that. But it was all just a list of text. Um, I think if I'm going to send it out electronically, which I will be doing, um, that it needs to pop a little bit more. Also, if it's going to be electronic, go ahead and have the links to the forms or the registrations or what have you in the file itself. And so while you can take this digital online newsletter and you know post it and have it searchable, you also uh, should be able to print it out and hand it to someone in church or print it out and mail it to someone and it still have enough information to where they can still look that up on their own, call that person or type in that URL and find the information that they are looking for. And it should look nice enough to be a decent printout that someone would want to look at, not just some text um, in a line. So, now comes time for um, coming up with a new newsletter format, a new template. 
And I'm all for doing that. But the problem is if I'm going to make a template, I'm going to try to find a way to automate it. And that could be pretty great, but it also could be really, really big. I had grand ideas of figuring out how to, for example, automate the prayer request so that if someone uh, enters a prayer for someone who is sick and chooses that as the option, it automatically inputs their name into the list of people who are being prayed for because they're sick. Likewise, if you uh, pray for the uh, to give thanks for someone's birthday, their name gets planted into the birthday section of those prayers, or what have you. You get the idea. That's a big, big ask, and that's a that's a it's a lot. I'm asking a lot, but I'm thinking about it now. And so I'm really testing out how that would happen and how that would work. I want to minimize my the amount of me making error and not recognizing someone's birthday, for example, um, that I can. So let's look at what I've come up with so far. Well, when I first got here, I uh, decided to uh, build a whole new website for the church. Um, and so I went on Squarespace, which I've had experience with, and I built a grand old website. Very proud of it. But, there we go. But my only issue is this. Um, based on uh, predecessors I've had and kind of looking at how they did their websites, um, I created basically just this new section which um, was a place that I could uh, uh, post my, um, my uh, rector letters, if you will, uh, all those, those letters from the clergy that come in, whether it's you know, an announcement about All Saints Sunday, um, which was a, actually a, a video I made, um, you know, a... A blurb about our senior warden g uh, getting in the news. Um, here we go. Uh, oh, here's here's my uh, parish letter to the congregation about our um, fellow or our stewardship drive. Um, so these were basically longer letters, and that's kind of what I did. It wasn't a, a week to week newsletter. It was just basically a place to put my letters and announcements to the parish. Um, and so then I thought, well, since we're on the website, let's, why is it not doing it? Let's try this. There we go. Let's make a newsletter page on the website. So here we have the Parish Press, Lent 3. Actually, that's not Lent 3. It's, it is Lent 3. You're right. Um, and so we have our mission statement. We have what's supposed to be who the reader and the server for the next week are. And here we have um, our... Uh, our events. Let's see if that'll work. There we go. Now, here's the problem with Squarespace. Squarespace, you listening to me? Just embed Google Calendars in a real and, and positive way. Um, or let there be some kind of calendar application where you could like say export someone's calendar and then import it as a CSV um, and have it work. Uh, you can import a CSV, but I think mostly that has to do with uh, commerce websites uh, who are importing a large uh, inventory that's in a Excel spreadsheet type format. So Squarespace, get on that. Um, oops, wrong one, there we go. Um, so here's my issue. I create this this parish press for the website, and that doesn't look half bad. 
it's not great, but like I was able to give it a little icon. You click on the side of it, and it, you know, it, I can't do it now, but you, um, oh, cancel. Um, you know, the information would come up to the side about like the title and where it is. Same thing over here. If you, um, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, so if you, if you hover over the thing, it, um, it tells you all about it. But the problem is you, if you have more than two events, you don't get those pictures. Also, it's in this odd month-long thing. Another uh, possible way to fix this is to do what you see right now, which is, if you, I don't know if you all are seeing that. I'm not seeing that quite right. Um, there we go. See if that works. Um, if you see right here, I have the same events, but they're just sort of in a list or what you would call an agenda format. And that's great, but the problem is there's two, it goes too far in the future. If I wanted to keep it just located on the next upcoming week, I would, uh, I'd have to find a way to do that. This just puts as many as uh, as many events as I deem I want to show. For example, if I say show the next seven events, it'll just show the next seven. If I say show the next ten, it'll show ten. Um, I think you can feature certain events over others to to make it want to pop more. So it will prep. It'll prefer featured events over just other events. But still, it's not a true and proper good list. And it also means I have to fiddle with what is seen as the list. Again, I don't want to make choices. I just want to proof things. And then here we have our prayers of the people pulled straight from the, um, the thing. In fact, this should actually not be bold. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so all that to say is that working with Working with Squarespace has just been awful um, for this project. Um, I could see things going a lot better in other areas. Squarespace is amazing for lots of other things, but for making a, uh, a template for a newsletter, it's not good. You can do a blog post, but I, yeah, it's not really meant to, to make a newsletter. So let's try Notion. For those of you who don't know, Notion is um, a, it's a little bit of everything and you can make it do what you, whatever you need it to do. Um, so some people use it as a project database um, and management system um, for teams of people who work together. So for example, I use it with my parish administrator to, uh, so that we're keeping up to date on each other's projects and that we're able to see uh, when one and another has done the, the task that we have been assigned uh, so that the next one can get on that job. Um, this I just put into, I put the same writing into a Notion page and here's what I came out with. So I gave it a nice picture. The, Here's our banner, here's our logo, here's the date. This is our mission statement. It kind of pops with this little, uh, what that's called a call out box. I, uh, this is something that's, not, that's unique to, um, that's pretty unique. Oh, excuse me. Um, I can instantly do a uh, table of contents um, and then basically using uh, simple markdown calls, I can, um, create this stuff. So here's the serving this week. Remember I showed you the server and reader from the website version? Well, this is what it should have looked like um, because what I did was I made a large database. I'll go ahead and show it to you. Um, with our, uh, So here's a bunch of our um, readers and our ushers and our servers. Carol Danvers, Barack Obama, Kennedy, Steve Rogers, Peter Parker, Natasha Romanoff, 
Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, and George Washington. Um, and they've all been assigned um, a job in the next three weeks. So if I go back to list view, which is the view that I um, have put a bunch of filters on and, and, and whatnot, here are all the people who have a job in the next week. So if I were to publish this right now, it would show who is scheduled for next Sunday and what their job is. And Natasha is a server and the father of our country is a reader. Now here we have the week ahead. Um, again, like the um, upcoming events that I wanted to do, this is uh, an embed of the church's Google Calendar. Um, it works a lot nicer uh, than um, Squarespace does. So Notion's already playing nicer uh, than Squarespace. And Notion doesn't even have API set up. So you hear me, Squarespace? Why don't you play nice with people who want to do stuff? Um, stop making me have to recreate a calendar as events bit by bit when I should just have one calendar that just everything else is referenced from. I want to make one change in one place and have it be reflected throughout the world. That's my goal. Um, anyway, so here we have this. It's, it's the church's calendar. It's not ideal. This is not exactly what I want it to be. But I could live with this. Now, is it nice and beautiful? No. Um, you know, if you were on your Google web page, Excuse me. Or if you, um, you know, were looking at the same uh, Google Calendar on your phone, it would look great because Google makes itself look great. When you're just doing an embed from, you know, a, a, a URL, you get the bare bones version. But I do like that you can, um, you can make it a, a week view. Or you can give it the agenda view I was telling you about, where you just see the the day and the occasion. Um, and you know, like any Google Calendar, you can click. Um, you see the description, which is what I put into it. Um, it's got our YouTube website <coughs> right there, so people who are online can can hopefully click on that and be sent to uh, our YouTube page or they can even copy the event into their calendar. This is, I think, the best <coughs> option so far, aside from physically typing out all of the upcoming events. Um, I, will, I will say one thing that I'm, I'm not super excited about is, um, or no, one thing I am super excited about is I made this from a spreadsheet. Um, I mean, shocker, not unlike creating a Excel sheet to mass populate a bulletin, you can use an Excel sheet to mass populate your calendar. Uh, you just import a CSV. Uh, make sure that your Excel sheet has all the proper like start and stop times and descriptions and, and titles and things like that. But all that's uh, available for you on Google's website. They'll tell you all the things you need to make a CSV file work as a uh, as a um, calendar. So yeah, do it. Um, now you have to pay a lot of close attention to that Excel sheet uh, before you upload it. But you know, if you make a mistake, you can always tweak it. Um, so my goal is this. Oh, and of course. Um, Unlike Squarespace, Notion has a really good way to uh, uh, change the font, change the background color, change the uh, change all of this stuff uh, for your needs. Like you know, to pop out what the prayer list uh, link is, uh, what the protocol for hospital and pastoral visits are. You know, having a little icon there, bringing it into a little box to draw your eye to it. Um, I think this is probably my favorite version 
so far. Oh, I was looking at ye at the thing and not here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, you can see here that. Uh, You're able to control a lot more with uh, Notion. And like I said, you can make a, you can make the, um, the uh, database work for you. Now, another thing I, I didn't show is um, I also just messed around with a gallery view where you could, um, I'm going to lock this off so it gets rid of that new section. Lock page, here we go. All right, so um, here's the, here are the three people who are doing it. Um, and it's been locked so, you, so no one can make changes to it when, they, when you send this link public. Uh, I am going to go back to list view. I like that view better, but um, gallery view is not bad either. Um, so does this need some work? Yes. Um, but I'm not hating it. Um, are there things I would change? Yes. Like I don't like that because these are all technically separate pages in uh, Notion, they get that little page icon next to them. Um, I wish it was just the name and the tag of what they are responsible for, but I mean, I can, I can work around that for the time being. Um, I could probably resize this calendar. Let me see if I can resize this calendar real quick. Oh, let's see, unlock this page. Um, see if I can, here we go. Let's see if I can squeeze this. Oh, oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, that solves that problem. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hate this. This is not bad. Um, is it perfect? No. Um, but is it just awful? No, I don't think so. And it's this would be really easy to put on the church's website. Um, this is a URL, and so I would just have the Squarespace page redirect uh, to this, and this would always be the uh, the updated uh, um, newsletter article. And what's great is that it could be a static link, so that every it, it could just be you know redeemer dot com or redeemerbrookhaven.com slash newsletter. And that, and that one link would always go to whatever the current version of the newsletter is. And yet, past articles, past versions of the newsletter could still be accessible through an archive link that you could set up in the future. Um, I think this would be the best way to do it. Um, I'm not going to you know, make a bunch of Google Docs and keep everything in a Google folder or on Drive or whatever. Um, this is how I'm going to do it, um, either on Notion or some other way to do it. And again, um, if it looked a little better, I wouldn't hate it. Um, I suppose I could add some pictures in here and make it pop. But for right now, I think this would be a good, doable um, newsletter that looks good enough to print, but then also... Uh, could easily be a digital uh, reference source that provides actionable links to the things that it's trying to get your attention about. Um, in the future, I'm just going to have to see how automating the input of changing names uh, happens because if I can get uh, the prayer list names and the future um, activities of the church, especially in the calendar, to happen more automatically to where there's not so much tending on my part. Um, or as I said, having that point where you have people checking sources to copy and paste into another source. If I can just take the human element out of that and just set it up to where it happens through an API or some other automated hook, 
then I'm all about it. And I would just come in toward the end of the week, give it a uh, give it a look, see, check it over, and then publish it in advance um, of it needing to go out. So yeah. Anyway, that is not my solution. That's actually just me um, telling you what I've been doing to try to solve a problem. Um, I wish I had been here to help walk you through all the stumbling blocks and the different versions of um, newsletters I tried out in uh, Squarespace and in uh, Notion. Uh, there were some real stink bombs uh, that I tried to make before this. So this is the benefit of a lot of my error, um, and it's still not even done. This is still a learning experience, but I'd rather show my work to you so that you can um, learn and improve as well. If you have ideas about how I can improve this, please let me know. You can email me, andrew at thechurchnerd.com. That's a new email, by the way. Andrew at thechurchnerd.com. Or you can visit thechurchnerd.com for all the contact information and the best ways to get in contact with me. Uh, tweeting would be another good thing, too. So tweet me at churchnerdpod. Um, all right. God bless.